What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Going to do a segment I haven't done on this channel in quite some time. I like to call it the Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. Uh, Market Watch is basically a segment where I talk about some cards that have seen huge price fluctuations over the last couple of weeks to a month. And I try and discuss why I believe that that is. Uh, I talk about, you know, uh, some of the decks that use these cards. And then ultimately, if you guys should pick these cards up, hold on to them or sell them, you know, in hopes of making you guys a little bit of money because, you know, we all know that Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very expensive game. So the first card I want to talk about is X Saver and Boker. I was absolutely shocked to see that this card was running over $30. Uh, a small portion of that can be attributed to the fact that it's a secret rare, and we all know that secrets are infinitely more difficult to pull than ultras, but I mean, there are tons of shitty secret rares that never amount to anything higher than $5 cards, so it can't all be that. I think a lot of this is directly pinned to all the wind-up hype. If you've been keeping up with the wind-up deck, you know that you need x Saber Invoker to pull off a lot of the good OTKs because it summons wind-up straight from the deck. Uh, I think that this is one of the most ironic cards because... It's really mediocre in the deck that it was intended for. Uh, X Sabers rarely, if ever, make this card. It's actually pretty decent in Six Samurai. If you get Gateway on the field, you can do some really nutty things. And then, obviously, good in Windups. I just feel like Windups aren't that great of a deck. I don't see them as anything more than Tier 2.5 or something like that. So, you know, ultimately, I feel like if you've got one of these in your trading minder, I got to give this a sell. I feel like the Windup bubble is just going to burst. Maybe in about a month or so when people realize the deck's just not that great. Next card I want to talk about is Forbidden Lance. Uh, Forbidden Lance, and this is going to be kind of like a spoilers alert, is one of the cards that I think is going to be one of the defining cards of the format. I've said it once and I'll say it again. With Solemn Warning only at one, people are going to be relying on Bottomless, Torrential, Evac, Book of Moon. You know, they're going to be relying on more traps and more proactive quick play cards basically to respond with summons rather than, you know, use warnings and solemn judgments on them. You know, those are going to be power cards that you're going to want to save. That means that Forbidden Lance just gets infinitely better, not to mention it protects all monsters from battle, you know, in certain situations. It can protect you from those spell and traps destruction. On your opponent's turn or on your turn, you can use it offensively and defensively. You look at pretty much any stunnish type deck and you can run it in that. You can obviously... It's staple in decks like Macro Rabbit, which are probably going to be tier one. Same thing goes with Fire Fist. You know, I just see like this. I see this card is just absolutely solid. I mean, the super rare right now is actually running $20. Um, that's crazy because, you know, even the height of Dino Rabbit when, you know, it was by far the best deck two formats ago, you know, when we still had priority and everything, the card was never that expensive. You know, you're seeing even the common versions going for $10. So I'm going to give this a hold because... I feel like if every stunish type beatdown deck is going to start running this, I mean, even you saw Billy Breaks Mermills running copies of this. I, I feel like this card has the potential to go up some. I mean, maybe you can see those supers go to maybe like a cool $25 or so. And then uh, we're going to move on to our next card, um, Big Eye. Okay, <laughs> it was on February 7th. This is what, like maybe a little over two weeks ago when I did the top five cards that need to be reprinted in Yu-Gi-Oh! Top uh, Part 3, I said that Big Eye was currently going for about $30 to $40. Big Eye is fucking over $70 now. It is insane. Now, a large portion of that is just, you know, prophecy hype. We all know that we're getting closer. We're edging closer to the Divine Spellbook of Judgment and Prophecy is just being a retardedly stupid deck. Prophecy is a deck, obviously, that can make rank 7s easily. So why wouldn't you want to have at least one copy of a Big Eye? You know about Girgia and the fact that, well, basically anything that runs Fortress and Multiples is going to run a one this card because, you know, on the off chance that you get two Fortresses that you can drop, maybe you snatch still your opponent's BLS with Big Eye and just win the game. But here's the deck that I really think that uh, has uh, been kind of one of the key elements to Big Eye's explosion in price. Uh, Mermail Atlantean. You know, you look at the fact that Mermail is a deck that consistently dropping rank or can that's consistently dropping rank sevens now with Abyss uh, Gaios and stuff like that. Now they can easily play Big Eye, a card that, I mean, when's the last time you ever saw a Mermaid Atlantean player drop Big Eye. But the way the deck is constructed now with so many level 7 monsters and Abyss Squall, they can make it very, very easily. It also gives them access to get over those big beaters that um, Abyss Giles can't get over. Things like Judgment Dragon or BLS on the off chance that those are actually on the field when, you know, you resolve an Abyss Squall. So, you know, uh, I definitely got to give Big Eye a hold because 
I'm anticipating that Prophecy and Mermelanian are going to be two of the best five decks that we're going to see throughout this entire format. So I actually think that this could be, sadly, a $100 Yu-Gi-Oh card. And speaking of Mermel, that leads us to our last card, Abyss Gaios. Abyss Gaios came out and he was a mere $2 because it was one of the most forgotten cards in Abyss Rising. But, you know, I don't think that people ever thought that the card was bad. They just looked at the summoning conditions and thought, I'm never going to give up two Megalos to summon this guy. But now that the deck has added a multitude of level 7s, all relatively easy to summon, and they've added their blockbuster card in Abyss Squall, I think that people realize we can tutor and we can easily summon just uh, rank 7s like it's nothing. And Abyss uh, Gaios, when you get them on the field against effect-heavy decks like wind-ups or in sectors, I mean, you have two built-in skill drains. I mean, two turns of skill drain on a 2800 beater, I mean, that's basically GG against those decks. So I actually look at this card, I see the risk and the uh, reward completely out of whack. The risk is relatively low. I have to give this card a buy. You know, it's only running about $5 right now. Kind of sucks that a lot of sites like Troll and Toad are completely sold out. But, you know, I actually think that this card could have the potential to run about 11 to $12. Because, I mean, I think that most people think that Mermel Atlanteans are probably about the first or second best deck of the format with windups being completely dead, in my opinion. But I don't think that, that Mermel are going anywhere. So, I mean... Uh, people are going to need to run multiple copies of this guy. So I see this guy potentially leveling out at, you know, between $10 and $13. So I got to give him a buy. So uh, if there are some other cards that you guys want me to talk about or some other huge fluctuations that maybe I missed, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe it'll make it into a future segment of um, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. And uh, thank you for watching as always. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I'll talk to you later.